So uh, this section of the webinar, we're going to talk about using the you know the the great tools that we already provide. You know, everyone that has access to the website back office can do all the things I'm going to show you how to do today. The back, the primary means you by which you're going to format the content it, on your website is the WYSIWYG editor. Now this is actually a fairly old term as far as computer terms go, but it, what it stands for what you see is what you get. So the, the goal of these editors is to allow you to visually format the content uh, without having to know anything technical. Uh, it's got a word processor like toolbar just like Microsoft Word or uh, any of the other uh, you know Google Docs or any of the other word processing programs that let you do basic formatting of text, uh, changing sizes, fonts, italics, etc. Uh, I'm going to show you how to add images, video, PDFs, links, etc. A really great tool in the WYSIWYG editor are, is the table toolbar. It lets you uh, control formatting uh, by you know adding columns, placing things uh, in a grid. It, it's really a, an invaluable tool to to get the sort of formatting you might want. Uh, the tool actually in the background is generating the HTML code that the browser is reading to show you the page. And if you're really brave and if you, know, if you have a little bit of knowledge, you can actually go in and edit that code yourself. But, you know, a lot of people still have their content, their marketing copy and, and whatnot written in Microsoft Word. And they're comfortable doing that. They know how to get around. They know how to use it and to make the content look like uh, they want it to look. And one of the most important things you can do when formatting your content in Word is to insert it into the uh, the WYSIWYG editor using uh, the paste from Word toolbar. So let's uh, actually make some edits to one of the sites here. Let's go back to the the first designer site here. And I'm going to go ahead and go into the services page. And uh, you know, here's the WYSIWYG editor. So just to be really clear, um, to those of you that are not familiar that with uh, what you're seeing here, this is the Advisor Products Back Office, um, originally called the Advisor Sites Back Office. Uh, this is a content management system. Content management system simply means that this is how you uh, get new stuff on your website. And it could be text, it could be pictures, it could be um, links, graphics. In our case, we also give you types of pages. Um, so what, what you're seeing here is uh, called the, uh, the editor. And for every page on your site where you have text, you have a, uh, a place here where you can edit that text and format it. So um, I just wanted to give you that background. Great, thanks, Andy. So I, you know, as Andy was talking, I uh, opened up a Word doc off screen and and copied some text. I'm going to show you the proper way to insert it into a page. Now, a lot of people just hit paste or Control V or right click and paste or whatnot. That's not the right way to put text in from Word. The right way, if you see this button up here, it's got the little Word icon. If you hover over it, it says Paste from Word. Uh, it might give you a, a security warning asking if it's okay for this application to access your clipboard. You want to allow that access. And you see it's going to paste it properly then. Um, one common complaint I hear about the WYSIWYG editor, it's too small. I'm editing a, a big piece of text. There's a little button here that says fit to window. Makes the browser look almost exactly like Word where you get a full screen width and height and you can do all your editing in a, you know, as big a space as you have available. It's really a good way to do it. You know, one of the challenges that we have is that we have lots of help videos and we have lots of help on the site. But to be perfectly honest with you, we, we, we're improving things so much that it's hard to keep the help updated with all the new changes that we make. Um, Jim, we got a couple of questions that I just want to uh, mentioned. One of the questions is, how do you work with compliance vis-a-vis uh, -vis all the changes? And if I do some of my own changes, then do they go into some compliance bin for approval? 
And the answer to that, Marty, is uh, yeah, absolutely. We work with uh, dozens of BDs, independent BDs, um, and we have a very extensive compliance engine. We've actually done some uh, webinars about that. And um, our compliance engine gets very high ratings from the broker dealers because we have lots of workflow built in there. And you could uh, put notations on every uh, uh, change that you make. And it automatically, you can insert a reference number on uh, notations so that we really dramatically uh, ease the workflow for the compliance officers. Uh, and plus, we can also do uh, archives of the site. We take snapshots. The, 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 the compliance engine has been overhauled over the past uh, year or so in a big way. So um, uh, yeah. So Jim, uh, anything else that you want to touch on on the, uh, the Yeah, episode? there's actually lots of stuff. Um, I'll try to go through this quickly. I know we're running out of time for this topic, but I just want to show you uh, some of the, the the more advanced stuff that people want to do. Uh, actually, in some of it's fairly basic, but uh, it can be a little elusive. So let's say you wanted to link to a page on your site within the copy uh, on a particular page. The easiest way to do that is to actually go to your site, find the page you want to link to. Say so you want to link to the page about your team. You take this address from your browser, you copy that. In here you highlight the word you want to be the link. And you click on this little chain icon here, insert hyperlink. So and then you go link. ahead and you the chain link. Yep. Yep. And you paste that address right in this URL field here. And okay, that's all you need to do. Uh, another common request is, how do I put an image on here that I have on my hard drive? So uh, there's an insert image button here. And if, if it's local to your machine, you can do an upload here. And upload it. Um, if it's already on there, if you've already used it, you can select it here, and it'll show you what it looks like. You can actually set the width and the height using these numbers, but uh, I recommend that you don't use that because the file is still going to be as big as it is on your local machine. It's just going to be displayed on the page a little bit smaller. You should crop and resize the photo before you upload it, and also check the resolution. High resolution photos meant for print will appear very, very large on a website if you use them without altering them. Um, it's a good idea to enter all text because that'll help search engines and it'll help folks that have a visual impairment when they're using screen readers. And you want to stick to formats GIF, JPEG, and, and PNG. Uh, and I have a link here to, if you don't have Photoshop or something similar, this is one of many uh, websites that allow you to do some basic photo editing for free, picnic.com. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and insert this. So uh, you want to also pick your alignment when you do this. If you want on the right side, right, etc. You know, play around with these things. It's not going to show up on your site uh, even if you don't have compliance until you save the page itself. So you can fool around with the layout before you actually commit it to your site. Now, um, that site that Jim gave, Picnic, is, uh, is a photo editor that's online. Another one that if you want to download some local software that is really a great piece of software is called Photoscape at photoscape.com. I would go to, uh, go to download.com and then do a search for Photoscape if you want to download it. I think that's probably safer. Mm -hmm. um, so um, we have another question from somebody who's asking me, how often do you want to change your, uh, how dynamic do you want your content to be? And, you know, unfortunately, Bob, the answer is, as dynamic as you can make it, um, people, the way you're going to get a following, like say if you write a blog, and I'm going to be talking about blog writing in a few minutes, is by keeping your uh, content dynamic and changing it all the time. So that's why, And that's why we provide these tools, because you know, we, we provide, with our Platinum license, we provide eight hours of service. Platinum license is $2,100 a year. But you, know, you get a whole lot with that, including all of our content. 
we pack all the, quite honestly, all the content and the most value into the platinum license. Um, and that is, you know, like I'd say, you know, 90%, maybe more of the, of the websites that we sell now are platinum because people want to have that ability to call you when they want service. Um, you know, because it, 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 you, you don't, you, you, and because you want, you want to be able to do this stuff a little bit on your own, but you also want to be able to call somebody when you run into help, run into trouble with it. And so we package uh, the platinum site with the um, with the uh, with the content, and um, there's just a ton of content. I mean, we post about uh, 12 or 15 new articles on wealth management that are written by journalists uh, every month, and um, there's just a lot of content that goes up on the site. And we've done webinars about all of our content. Somebody wants to know, Jim, if you can edit the hypertext of the website to improve the ranking of the website in search engines. Uh, yeah, you can absolutely. Uh, as I said, this WYSIWYG editor is generating HTML itself. And if you notice down here, uh, towards the lower left of the WYSIWYG editor, normal, HTML, and preview. Those are the three modes this editor supports. If you want to see the markup it's generating, you can click on HTML. I said it. If you're brave or if you have some knowledge of both, you can feel free to go in here and edit the HTML yourself. That's really for more advanced users, though. Right. There were just three last things that I think are really important to show folks here. I'm going to get through them quickly because I know we're out of time for this topic. Uh, one really uh, helpful formatting tool is the table toolbar here. Now, at a table, you'll see this is very similar to tables in, in Microsoft Word, if you've used that. You're going to see the outline of the table in the editor, but on the page you won't see it unless you do some uh, ad advanced settings and set borders. But uh, I'm going to put some text here, and then I'm going to combine this uh, part of the demo with uh, another part. I'm going to insert a video in this part of the, the table here. Uh, again, you click on the, the button that says Insert Media. So if you're not sure what any of these buttons do, just put your mouse over them, and it'll tell you. Uh, insert Media will insert a video or audio file uh, in the proper way for it to uh, be playable on the site itself. It'll embed it in the page. Uh, so again, you can upload a local one or use a uh, file that you have already uploaded. And you can set some parameters here with height, auto start, and uh, controls and whatnot. I recommend that you don't have auto start selected for your home page or if it's a, a video with some loud noise or not, it can be, uh, you know. Annoying. Annoying. <laughs> <laughs> so here I'm going to pick this video I have, insert it. Uh, this, this is a great way of creating a video blog, by the way. Yeah. And uh, again, I'm going to combine some of these parts of the demo. So, uh, downloadable files. People say, how do I post a PDF to my site so folks can download it? you got a white paper or you got a form or, or whatnot. You can use this little PDF icon here to upload lots of different kinds of files. I'm going to select to uh, upload a, a PDF here. That's a white paper. And there's more details on how to do all this and, and what types of files are supported. Uh, in the uh, in the PowerPoint. Uh, you should, when you're uh, uploading a file like that, you should write some text, download white paper, and highlight it before you click the button. That will make that text link to the file that you select. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And the video wasn't showing because uh, Internet Explorer is asking if it's okay to, to run the video player. So I'm going to say it's okay. I'm going to flip back to the site really quickly so we can wrap this up. And if I go to my services page now, you'll see the photo, the video, and the white paper and everything like right there. I just want to point out that, you know, most, most times when you go to a webinar, people don't run things live like we just did uh, because um, 
Well, the other day you saw what happened with Steve Jobs when he was trying to display the new uh, the new iPhone. Um, he had a, some, ran into some technical glitches. So, um, uh, thank you for doing that, Jim. It takes uh, you're a brave soul. Um, <laughs> well, I, I know that it works well. So. <laughs> well, 